Hello everyone, welcome. Today we're going to be reviewing acids and bases for your ATI T's exam. On your T's exam, you might be asked a question similar to which of the following acts as a Bronston-Larry acid or which of the following is a strong base or which statement best describes the chemical reaction. By the end of this video, you are going to know how to answer each one of these questions. So let's go ahead and get started. So how do we identify an acid and a base? Well, the answer is not so black and white. There is no definite way to identify an acid from a base without some hints, given like a chemical equation or some characteristics of a solution given. However, there are some helpful hints that, although not always work, they are very helpful. Acids are likely to begin with a H, and the H, or hydrogen, is attached to a non-metal. So, for example, hydrofluoric acid, hydrogen sulfate, hydrogen chloride, nitric acid, phosphoric acid. While bases are likely to have OH in them and or a metal attached to a hydrogen. So, for example, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, sodium hydride, and notice our sodium hydride does not have OH in it, but it does have a metal attached to a hydrogen, and that's what makes it a base. Calcium hydroxide is another example, and strontium hydroxide is another example. There are three important theories that can help identify an acid and a base. However, we are only going to emphasize on two of the three theories, those being the Arrhenius theory and the Bronston-Larry theory, because these are the only two theories I've seen on the practice questions for the practice T's exam. Now, if you happen to be watching this video and you're enrolled in a high school or college chemistry course, you will need to know the third theory, which I will touch on later. The Arrhenius theory states that acids release hydrogen ions in a solution and bases release hydroxide ions in a solution. bronson lari theory defines acids as proton donors and bases as proton acceptors. That third theory that I mentioned for those of you who are enrolled in high school and college chemistry is the Lewis theory. The Lewis theory states that acids will accept a pair of electrons and Lewis base will donate a pair of electrons. One helpful hint to remember before we go into these practice problems is that a proton is basically a hydrogen ion or a hydrogen ion is basically a proton. This is because a hydrogen atom originally has one proton and one electron. So when it becomes a ion or a cation, it loses one electron and it's only left with one proton. So in essence, a hydrogen ion is pretty much just a proton. Okay, let's go ahead and look at some examples. Our first example is going to be on the Bronston-Larry theory. Remember acids are proton donors and bases are going to be the proton acceptors. In this example, we have NH3 and we see on the solution side, it turns into NH4+. So NH3 has gained a hydrogen ion. In other words, it has gained a proton because remember, proton is equal to hydrogen ion. So this makes NH3 the Bronston-Larry base. Because remember by definition, bases are proton acceptors and NH3 has accepted a proton or gained a proton. Let's take a look at H2O. H2O turns into OH negative, which means that H2O has lost a hydrogen ion. In other words, it has lost a proton. This makes H2O the Bronston-Larry acid. Because remember by definition, acids are proton donors. There's one more step we need to look at. Bronson-Larry bases will always create a conjugated acid. So here, the conjugated acid is NH4+. And acids will always create a conjugated base. So here, the conjugated base is OH negative. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and look at an example of our other theory, the Arrhenius theory. Remember, Arrhenius theory states that acids release hydrogen ions in a solution and bases release hydroxide ions in a solution. 
In this example, HCl breaks down, or in other words, dissociates into hydrogen ions and chlorine ions. What we're really interested in here is the hydrogen ions in the solution, because by definition, acids release hydrogen ions in a solution. So that means that HCl is our Arrhenius acid because it created or dissociated into hydrogen ions in the solution. Okay, so I just want to touch on something just a tiny bit off topic because this particular chemical equation is very important for your T's exam. So on the top here, I have the exact equation that we just looked at in our example. HCl dissociates into hydrogen ions and chlorine ions. On the bottom, I have a more detailed chemical equation that includes H2O and H3O+. H3O+, by the way, is hydronium. Now, on your T's exam, or maybe another resource that you might look into, you might see this top equation or you might see the bottom equation, but just know that they both mean the same thing and you must be able to recognize it and describe what is happening here. Basically, when hydrogen ions dissociate in water, they become hydronium ions. So really, you're not going to see hydrogen ions by themselves in a solution. You're going to see hydronium ions. So just keep in mind that H plus and H3O plus, they are not literally the same thing, but they're pretty much the same thing. So keep that in mind. Okay, on to our next example. Okay, so here we have NaOH and it's going to dissociate into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Now the hydroxide ions in the solution is really what we're focusing on and we're interested in because by definition, bases release hydroxide ions in a solution. So because NaOH created or released these hydroxide ions in the solution, that makes NaOH the Arrhenius base. So here is a quick summary of the two theories that we just went over and we looked at one example of each of these. Let's go ahead and move on. Strong acids and bases dissociate or ionize completely in a solution. For example, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. It is found in our stomach and aids in digestion of proteins. I just want to emphasize that hydrochloric acid is an example that the T's loves to use often. So make sure you know what hydrochloric acid is and what the molecular formula looks like. So this is the chemical equation we're going to be working with. If you look closely, notice that HCl or hydrochloric acid disassociates completely apart. The hydrogen is donated to H2O and that becomes H3O and the chlorine becomes a chlorine ion all by itself. So because hydrochloric acid dissociated completely, that is what makes it a strong solution. But now how do we know HCl is an acid? Well, HCl lost its hydrogen or donated its hydrogen and that's what makes it an acid. Let's look at another example. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. In this chemical equation, sodium hydroxide dissociates into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Because sodium hydroxide completely dissociated, it completely broke apart, that's what makes it a strong solution. Now, what makes NaOH a base? Well, it created hydroxide ions in a solution, and the Arrhenius theory states that bases produce hydroxide ions in a solution. So sodium hydroxide is a base, and it is a strong base. Now, completely opposite of strong acids and bases, we have weak acids and bases. Weak acids and bases dissociate or ionize only partially or not at all in a solution. Let's look at an example. Acetic acid is a weak acid. In this chemical equation, notice that acetic acid did not dissociate it completely in the solution. It basically only lost its hydrogen ion and it kept the rest of the molecule intact. So because it didn't dissociate completely, it didn't break apart completely in the solution, that makes it a weak solution. Now how do we know acidic acid is an acid? 
Of course we can know it's an acid by its name, but what if we just saw its chemical formula? What if we just saw this chemical equation and not a label on acetic acid? How would we know it's actually an acid? Well, notice that acetic acid lost a hydrogen ion in its solution. And by the Bronson-Larry theory, an acid is one that loses a hydrogen ion. So one last thing I want to mention while using this exact same example is notice these double arrows going in opposite directions. This means that the chemical equation is reversible. If a solution is able to be reversed, assume it is a weak solution. Strong solutions are not reversible. Okay, so finally, what does all of this have to do with the pH scale? Well, the basics of the pH scale state that anything below 7 is an acid and anything above 7 is a base. And of course, 7 itself is neutral. The further you go up the scale and the higher the number, the stronger the base will be. And the lower you go on the scale and the lower the number, the stronger the acid will be. pH stands for potential of hydrogen. However, I like to think of it as a concentration of hydrogen because concentration helps me understand the definition better. More in depth, it really means the concentration of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. Because a solution will either have more hydronium ions or it will have more hydroxide ions, meaning it will be more acidic or more basic. Your basic solutions will have a higher concentration of hydroxide ions and your acidic solutions will have a higher concentration of hydronium ions. Okay, let's look at an example using hydrochloric acid. So here we have a flask with some H2O molecules in it, and we're going to add some hydrochloric acid represented by these molecules. Remember, these molecules are representing our sample here. Because hydrochloric acid is an acid, we expect it to create a high concentration of hydronium ions in the solution. So if we take a close look, we'll notice that H2O is actually attracting that hydrogen atom away from HCl. So that hydrogen is actually going to detach itself from, from chlorine and it's going to make its way over and it's attached itself to H2O. And obviously this is going to create H3O plus or hydronium ions. So H3O plus or hydronium is formed and now we're going to have a high concentration of H3O plus ions in this solution. Because hydrochloric acid is such a strong acid, we know that it's going to dissociate completely. So it'll look a lot like this in the solution. So that was an example of an acid. Let's look at an example of a base using sodium hydroxide. Here again we have a flask and again we have some water molecules inside and we're going to introduce some sodium hydroxide. Because sodium hydroxide is a base, we expect it to create a high concentration of hydroxide ions in the solution. If we take a close look at the sodium hydroxide, we'll notice that OH is actually going to dissociate or separate itself from sodium. And basically, sodium and OH are going to separate and they're going to form free ions. The result is a high concentration of hydroxide ions. Because sodium hydroxide is such a strong base, it's actually going to dissociate completely inside the solution. So it's going to look a lot like this. So there's one last thing I want to mention here, very important. I wrote down here that acids have a higher concentration of hydronium ions. However, if you remember, our cat mentioned that hydrogen ions are pretty much the same as hydronium ions because hydrogen ions, when they're in a solution, they turn into hydronium ions. So again, although it's not technically the same, it's pretty much the same thing. And I just wanted to mention that because if you look at another resource and they tell you the definition of pH, they might say that the acids have a higher concentration of hydrogen ions. But you know it's going to be okay because you know that hydrogen ions and hydronium ions are pretty much the same thing.
Okay, so we've looked at an example of acid using hydrochloric acid, and we've looked at an example of a base using sodium hydroxide. And we know that pH stands for potential of hydrogen. In other words, we can also say that it's the concentration of hydrogen ions or hydronium ions, same thing, and the concentration of hydroxide ions. This sums up this video. I hope you learned something new and thanks so much for sticking around guys. Until next time.